Hey everybody, this is Mike Campbell with Glossica. We've been getting requests from people for these t-shirts, so if you'd like one, go ahead and uh, send us a message in to our uh, service line, and we'll get back to you on that. Um, I just want to give you a few quick updates this week uh, regarding um, Stories, our new release. Uh, we're almost done. We're getting ready to uh, count down last few days before we release that. Now, Viva Platform, we're getting a lot more new people coming in, a lot of new applications that we're checking. And we're, you know, it, there's a lot of people, so we're working through those one by one. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is um, AI, you know, because we work on a lot of different AI stuff. It's actually machine learning and data sets. So if you're interested in, in me talking more about this uh, stuff in general, just go ahead and uh, go ahead and let us know because I don't want to really bore you on these uh, on these quick updates every week. But uh, if that's something you'd like to hear more about. Uh, data sets, how AI is progressing, how machine learning is, is progressing, what we do with syntax, what we do with semantics, what we do with multi-word expressions, and, and all of these uh, uh, tokenization, vectorization, you know, all of this stuff that we do in machine learning. Just let us know. Uh, what kind of questions do you have? What do you think, um, what are your concerns about AI? We'd love to uh, answer some of those questions here uh, during some of these uh, weekly updates. Now, we did get a response from somebody on a previous video saying, hey, uh, what's wrong with our Korean transcriptions? Because our Korean transcriptions does not show any of the uh, sound changes. And I, I was a little bit confused because we've always provided a phonemic and phonetic uh, transcription for almost all of our languages. Uh, we're still, we've got some people working on like Danish and Swedish still, but most of our languages already have all of these kinds of transcriptions. And, and for Korean, uh, you know, Actually, I, I wrote a paper on Korean morphophonemics back in 1996. So I've uh, I've been working on I'm you know I've been working on Korean um, uh, you know phonological changes for um, at least two decades now. But we've um, we we've always had this on the system. All you have to do is go down here and click. Uh, if you if you come in a little bit closer, um, here I've got the Korean um, one of the Korean sessions open right now. And then what we have here is the actual Korean script. So you have tang, ga, and then tok, iro, an, and you've got this double consonant here, and then go, si, So if you, if you look at this, and you, if you're gonna type the Korean properly, if you've, got, if you've got the typing tool on and you're gonna type it correctly, we're gonna write the letters exactly how Korean is spelled for the typing tool, because that's how you learn how to type. You know, you're not going to be typing sound changes uh, because that's not how t Korean is typed. So it's just like in English. For example, when I type little, even though I pronounce the double T as a R sound, I'm not typing something else that, I'm not typing something that's not a T or a double T because in English it's spelled as a double T, even though I don't pronounce it as a T sound. Okay, so the same thing in Korean. If I'm teaching you how to type, I'm not going to tell you to type little with different letters because there's one standard spelling. So when you go down here and you turn on the, the down arrow, for any of our languages, it's the same. You're gonna see phonics, you're gonna see pronunciation, and we're adding more transcriptions down there. And one of these days, you're gonna to start to see like um, gloss and uh, other kinds of transcriptions like male and female, um, tips, you know, for how to, how to learn this. So basically right here, what you're seeing here are the phonics. Now phonics refers to IPA, which is International Phonetic Alphabet. It's not a kind of beer. <laughs> in, in language learning, it's, um, or ling linguistics, it's, uh, it re it, we, we call it phonics because a lot of people, they don't know what IPA is, right? So phonics to an average English speaker is something that, okay, I, I kind of get the idea here. It's, a, it's regarding pronunciation. So if you actually learn how to read the phonic, phonetic symbols, you notice here that, for example, in the word ansko, you get this sound change, which is ansko. And so the, the N becomes an ung sound. And then also some of the consonants change. So for example, you have this double J at the beginning of a word, so chokuro, um, tanga, it, it's aspirated. So that aspiration, the little H added onto the symbol there, tanga, toguro, anko, spindeo. All of these uh, symbols are written exactly how a Korean person would pronounce that sentence. Now we also have another line here, and I can turn this off, I can turn it on, um, and then just hit the up arrow and it's saved. Hit the down arrow again and I can turn them back on. So I have a choice. Um, and then some people are asking us about Japanese. Oh, I can't find the kanji, I can't find the pronunciation, the furigana on, the, on all of the kanji. 
It's the same thing. So if you go into the Japanese course, you go down here and you click down, you'll see all of the options, okay? So in here, um, the pronunciation guide is basically an English letter, letter by letter spelling. So it's just C-H-A and then C-C-O-G and then, you know, so that's a lot easier to read than IPA because a lot of people, they don't know how to read an IPA. What is a C with a little hook at the bottom, that C sound? They don't know how to read that. So that's okay. We provide a simpler system to read, which is called pronunciation. So this is what we call a phonetic system. So it shows all of the sound changes. The phonemic system is actually the one that sticks to the writing. And so that anko is going to be spelled A-N-C-K-O, you know, and, and that's how you type it on the keyboard. Uh, so that's, that's just like typing English, you know, English words like light and bright. You don't pronounce that G-H, but you have to type it, okay? So that's just learning how to type. So in all of our languages, it's the same, whether it's Arabic, whether it's Hindi, you know, whether it's Russian. Um, there's a pronunciation guide that matches how people actually say the language, and then there's a typing guide, which is how the language is spelled. Okay, so once you understand that and how Gossica works like that, you're, you're gonna find that it's very useful. Uh, I found, you know, I'm interested in learning Gaelic, because, you know, like my, you know, my roots and my, my ancestry is, is uh, Scottish Gaelic. So I'm very interested in, in learning that language, and it's just, a tremendously difficult language to learn with the spelling uh, without the IPA. And so when I have that IPA on and I'm going through all the sentences, I'm just like, wow, I get how this language is pronounced now and all the sound changes. Quite complex, but fascinating to say the least. And I think that it's, um, it's a really, really, really great tool once you get to see like how all of the sentences, they change those sounds. And then now I can read the, I can take a new Gaelic sentence and almost read it without the, the IPA help because I kind of, have an idea of how those sound changes work. So you can use it as a crutch in the beginning to help you. And then once you get used to how the, you know, the spelling works and how the, maybe the, the letters are, it's a different alphabet, how those work, you can turn that off. And so we, we just want to provide you with that freedom where you can turn it on, turn it off whenever you need it. And it's always there for you. All right. So um, if you want to hear us talk more about what our linguistics team is doing, uh, we're doing stuff on, on tokens, we're doing stuff on like, uh, uh, we're building data sets actually, uh, conjugation, declension data sets for a lot of East European languages. We're working on tokenization issues for Turkic languages because you have this agglutination problem and words get really long. Um, a lot of fascinating things that we're working on. I'd love to hear your questions, anything grammatical or linguistic or maybe phonological, uh, pronunciation, sounds. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Hungarian or if it's Mongolian. I, I'm interested to hear what y your questions are. Um, one thing that really blows my mind, uh, something uh, that we came across this week is Swahili conjugations. Because uh, we, we've been working on East European conjugations. But if you open up a Swahili conjugation on Wiktionary, go try this. Find a, a verb in Swahili and open up. And you're going to see like a million conjugations for a single verb. Now, that really blew my mind but it's a fun thing that we're gonna start working on very soon. Anyway, um, I'll send you a link to that. Uh, thanks for watching. We're gonna send you some new updates and exciting new releases next week. Bye.